the last part of this 4.4 is about IPv6, the new version of IP. Uh, as we've already mentioned, the initial motivation for this is that we're running out of IP addresses with IPv4. So um, because that 32-bit address space is, has been allocated, we need more IP addresses. And that's what this, this protocol is uh, primarily was designed for. There's some additional motivations that also addressed things like um, improving the, the speed of processing and forwarding on routers, as well as providing some quality of service. So in, in this case, we can actually, um, there are some changes in the header that facilitate quality of service. So if you need to provide different data flows, different kinds of service, you can do that. Let me show you uh, this. So this little one here is IPv4. And this is IPv6. And you can see the source address and destination address at 128 bits is what four times the size of IPv4. 2 to the 128 is about 3.4 times 10 to the 38th addresses. This is a huge number, and it's so huge that it's almost inconceivable. Let me try to bring it into perspective for you. This number um, can cur currently, um, for the 6.5 billion people alive today, um, they, each one of those people could have 5 times 10 to the 28 IP addresses. Each person could, uh, for this many. Um, IPv6 can address more than 1,000 devices for every atom on the Earth's surface. So I think we have enough this time. Um, um, the people that did IP4 thought they had enough too. Yeah, but um, I think in terms of every atom on the Earth's surface could have a thousand IP devices. Like that's definitely enough. Um, another, another, some of the things that happened here is the header has been significantly streamlined. It's only 40 bytes. And that's fixed. You can't have options. It's only ever 40 bytes. Um, and you see where most of those bytes are is in the source and destination address addresses. Um, also, fragmentation was disallowed. So now you can't fragment. Um, another big change to IPv6 is it added the idea of flows and priority, uh, where you could have kind of this idea of flows of data, sort of like maybe think about streaming media. And perhaps you need to give those certain priority um, so that, that you get good quality of service, good video streaming quality, as an example. So the priority field is used to identify priority among datagrams in a flow. So you could mark some fields as being higher, pro some datagrams as being higher priority, and maybe they would experience better service. Um, the flow label is used to identify datagrams in the same flow. But this idea of a flow is not that well defined, um, but at least th that capability is there. There is a next header field, and this next header identifies the upper layer protocol for the data. So it's where the header starts for the, the next um, data, the, the encapsulated data. Note that these specific changes fr from IPv4, there is no checksum. It was removed entirely, and this is nice because the checksum had to be recomputed at each hop because the time to live changed, so that if the data of the packet changed, then the, that checksum would change. Um, the options were completely uh, were removed, but they're, they are still allowed, but they're outside of the header. They actually get pushed into the payload, and the next header field can be set to point to them, basically. So the next header um, here could point to some more um, IP information, or it could point to the actual um, transport layer that's contained within it. And the last thing I, I want to say on this um, changes is th there's also the need to have an I, uh, a, a version 6 for ICMP. Um, that has additional messages like packet is too big since there's no fragmentation, uh, but there's an ICMP v6 
which does the error reporting for IPv6. It does some other things as well, but that's um, that's what that is.